There you are, my dreamer. Do you ever want to just sail away together? I was discussing an alternative myth. I'll call it dramatic myth. Why not start over right here? This is the two of us. And we can weather just about anything, you and I. The idea that life as we experience it's a big act. Are you ready to come home? And that behind this big act is the player. And the player... Wake up. ...is you. And the story came first. It's a pretty personal story of mine. You know, these kind of experiences, dream experiences, are something that I've been into all of my life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, practicing lucid dreaming and, and out of body experiences, those kind of things. So that I've been doing that for a, a long time. And so I wanted to try and share those experiences with, with other people. And uh, yeah, then it became, I've been trying to communicate those themes through my craft as a filmmaker. And everything kind of fell short until VR came along and then suddenly it was like a big light bulb and a moment for me and I thought, yeah, this is it, this is my thing. I finally got a chance to tell these stories because, you know, at first it was going to be a documentary series about taking people and trying to give these experiences to them and get them to give real honest reactions. And I thought, is it an app, this thing that I'm trying to communicate? You know, is it something interactive? And there really wasn't that mode of communication and then VR came along and I instantly jumped in and started experimenting and it was all leading to this project and That's that was so cool. 2012 so oh, wow. uh, when the uh, DK1 came about on Kickstarter and uh, just started teaching myself the tools and um, you know really transferring my skills over from traditional film to this space. A lot of the visual motifs in there I, I've had like, direct dream experiences of those things and so those are the kind of things I directly want to communicate. Um, you know, there's a cube involved and there's this kind of glyph that turns over and over and over and it, it turns into different things throughout this story. And uh, that's something that is a repetitive theme of my inexperiences. Um, and I'm just a, a big fan, you know, part of my um, education is, is psychoanalysis and semiotics. So it's like how objects mean different things to different people. And it can be a very mundane object, but it actually means everything to that person. So those are the kind of things that I've, we've been exploring as well. As far as the tone and the style of it, I wanted it to feel timeless. Like it's, you don't really know what era it is. I don't want it to be a fully contemporary um, story, but it's got an old fashioned value to it. So. Um, you know, there's a bit of a, not a moral element to it, but, you know, I, I think what I've learned for myself is that if you, in, in, a, in a modern world where everything's so grabbing your attention, you do, it takes harder and harder work to focus on small details, and I find that that's where I get the most joy, is actually really simple things, so that's kind of fed into the aesthetic, I mean, there's a bit of an old school feel about the whole thing. That's why we've got the old old telephone and the wardrobe was very deliberately kind of um, designed so that it was not period um, you know, uh, and bias. Uh, it's in an old terrace house. It's an English terrace house, even though, you know, the, the kind of story is, um, you know, we've got an American cast, but I, I wanted to just to kind of mix that up so it just had a real general tone of of um, warmth and uh, you know simple pleasures, I suppose. So we've spent the last eighteen months developing and, and, and building episode one. It's a twenty-minute experience, the total thing. Um, so you've seen the like the festival cut, which is half the film up to a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are answers that come about the first half in the second half, but there are eight episodes in total. So, and that's what's taken the time. Right? I built out the entire story world from ep one to the end of that eight, and so it's really a case of un unwrapping those now one, one piece at a time. We have an April plan right now for for release on Viveport and then onto other platforms as well. We're talking to lo location-based entertainment, whether this fits in that kind of forum. You know, we're still exploring 
Um, but uh, yeah, so roughly, you know, it's going to be pretty soon. Pretty soon for F1, and then we are actively seeking. Uh, we're packaging up the financing and going through casting for the next three Fs, which will take us up to a season one. Right. Um, and again, another cliffhanger. You'll get a big boost in what's to come for the final four as well. It's not actually mocap. It's uh, volumetric video. So it's there. It's actually them performing. Mm -hmm. um, so there, it's we shot with Microsoft at the um, Voy uh, Volumetric Capture Studios, Mixed Reality Studios in Seattle, and it's essentially a holographic video camera rig, essentially. So it's it's a hundred and six <laughs> cameras in a in an array, all pointing to a, a like a cylind cylindrical space in the middle. It's like two meters wide. It can just fit two people inside it. And what they do is they film with all these cameras with laser scanners, and so they're basically filming people, but they're also capturing their shape. And then they mesh the two together, and it's essentially a, a captured hologram. Yeah. So mocap is really capturing main limb movement, yeah. and then it's handcrafted avatar work. Or something like that. This is actually just the people with their wardrobe and their facial expressions. It's not flawless, no, but really. we wanted to prove for ourselves, firstly, but you know, mostly that there is a big future in this kind of capture technology. We're really, it's important to us with the, to develop virtual reality as a storytelling medium for actors as well as story. And so um, you know, that's why we've been pushing for it. And it's by far, by probably five times, the most volumetric in any project in the world at the moment. And and the, the, the resolution will get better and better and better. Yeah. And uh, but. I just wanted to see what it'd be like to actually look someone in the eyes, you know, and, and try and, you know, as they look straight back at you and then you're in the room with them, yeah. what is that experience like? The thing that will develop over the entire series, you'll, you'll get enough in each episode, but you are learning uh, who you are as a character in this story. And you don't know who you are right now in, in the story, but it becomes more and more and more apparent um, as you discover the story world and uh, you know the, the layers peel back yeah and who you are is, is actually going to be pretty spectacular the, the way the industry is shaping up is we're kind of getting to this stage now where we're pushing it more and more and, and it's just not you know getting into people's homes that there is that that market is growing but to really get it to a lot of people right now um, you also need to supplement that with location-based installation places where you can go and have the premium experience on the best hardware and the, you know, the most immersive version of it. I, I, in an ideal world, this experience would be, you would walk into a room that is the room, you know, there's furniture and you can lean on the chair and it's there and that kind of thing. So we would want that kind of stuff. Well, like one of my big influences, um, storytelling-wise, is Clive Barker. He, he explore, you know, and it's the, it's the Narnia effect, essentially. It's the, the kind of the, the, the humdrum mundane world that is transformed. There's some kind of doorway that you get to walk through into a, an amazing space. And, yeah. You know, that concept will be repeated over and over and it will get bigger and bigger. It's a definitely a layers of the onion, you know, kind of brush and doll um, ex ex exercise that we're going to be going through. And, and that quite neatly ties into the technology will become unlocked to give the kind of experiences that I've got in mind for future episodes because it, it's a it's a little bit black mirror in a way that it's an anthology so that but what, what I'm doing is exploring different aspects of the perception of reality with each episode so with this it's the bridge between dreaming you know dreaming life and the waking world um, one of these, one of the main characters, it will be differently in, the, in each episode, um, will be obsessed with time and the perception of time. And so we'll explore in the mechanics of that, that experience, time loops and fractured and branching narratives and those kind of things. There will be, a, a, there's a, um, a girl, a young girl who's being bullied um, in, a, in a future episode and uh, she's got an imaginary friend, but actually that is a real friend that just nobody else can see that is giving her clues to build a machine that opens a special kind of door, but she doesn't know where it goes. And so we find out where that goes. There's, there's lots of, you know, each of these episodes is, is exploring a different aspect of space, time, inner consciousness, outer physical world. And that's how I've kind of broken it all apart and uh, mapping it out for 
I just think VR is the perfect medium to explore, you know, the perception of reality. We're practicing how to present this story, hmm. and uh, I, I think one of the things that's, that's working is not giving it all away. You know, it's like go and find out for yourself, like oh, yeah. what the story is and what it all means and where it's all going. You know, that's I, I really I like films where you have to do a bit of work yourself. You know. It just becomes a bit much more integrated, so I just encourage audiences to do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah.